In this video, we will try and find all of the real solutions for this given polynomial equation, and then write our equation in factored form. So again, uh, when you're given a polynomial equation, we have to first figure out the possible rational zeros. Uh, so we do that by looking at P and Q. So we have P here, and then we have Q, the leading coefficient there. Uh, and then we look at all of our positive and negative factors. So we have P, so the factors of P are plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, and then plus or minus six. So those are all of our factors of six. And then Q, the factors of one are just plus or minus one. Uh, so because we're dividing all of these by one, right, when we take a look at P over Q. So P divided by Q. Since we're just taking all of these and dividing by one, we know that anything divided by one is just itself. So really it's just all of our factors of P. Uh, so these are our potential rational zeros. Um, so to figure out the potential rational zeros, what you would then, or sorry, to figure out which of these potential rational zeros are in fact our zeros, is you could go through and use synthetic division to solve the, uh, to solve this, right? You just use synthetic division going through your different zeros and then uh, figure out which ones work. Now I am going to use Two. I know two works. I kind of cheated. I looked on um, a calculator and I know that two works. So I'm actually going to just confirm that using synthetic division. So we have two here. So that means that our factor would be x minus two. Uh, this is when x equals two, right? x equals two. And then use synthetic division to factor this. So taking all the leading co all of our coefficients, so we have 1, 3, negative 7, and 6. And use synthetic division on this. So bring the 1 down. 1 times 2 is 2. And then remember you add in synthetic division, so 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 times 2, that's 10. Negative 7 plus 10 is a positive 3. 3 times 2 is six. Oh, that's because this is negative here. So negative six plus six is zero, right? It's negative because we have a negative there. So negative six plus six is zero. And voila, we have a, a factor. So if you recall, um, this was this was the coefficients of our cubic polynomial. So those were the cubic coefficients. This was the quadratic coefficient. This was the linear coefficient, and then that was just our constant. So when you divide by our linear factor, it results in a polynomial that is one degree less. So this is now a quadratic, and then the linear term and our constant. So if we look at the so we found our first factor. Our first factor is x minus two. So we're left with this depressed polynomial, x squared plus 5x plus 3. And then we can just try and factor this uh, to get the remaining zeros. So if we look at factoring this, so we want to know what multiplies to be 3 and adds to be 5. Well, if you think of the factors of 3, the factors of 3 are 1 and 3, and that's it and one plus three doesn't equal five, so what would we do? Um, this doesn't work for factoring. Uh, okay, so if we can't factor this, well, what can we use? What other methods can we use to solve a quadratic? So just because something's not factorable doesn't mean it doesn't have solutions. We have options. We can use the quadratic formula, which is what we're going to use for the, the rest of this problem. So we have x equals, and then we're gonna plug it all into the quadratic formula. So it's the opposite of b, so negative five 
plus or minus uh, the square root of b squared, so that's 25, minus 4 times a times c, so 4 times 1 times 3, that's 12. Uh, all that's under the radical, all divided by 2 times a, which is just going to be 2. Uh, so negative 5 plus or minus the square root of, let's make this a little smaller, uh, negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 13. So negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 13. All this divided by 2. So these are our other two roots. Um, so the other two zeros are x equals negative 5 plus the square root of 13 over 2. And x equals negative 5 minus the square root of 13 all over 2. So we have a 0 here, a 0 here, and then we found that this was a 0 before, x equals 2. So those are all of our zeros. So now how would we write this in factored form? So remember when you're writing factors, it's x minus your r, your root, is a factor. So it's x minus 2 here. So the other factors are going to be x minus this and x minus this. So when you take the negative of this whole thing, it's going to change its signs. So we're going to have x minus, but it's going to turn positive. So 5 plus the square root of 13 over 2. That's one of our factors. And then the other one is going to be x plus 5 minus the square root of 13 all over 2. And then this whole thing is equal to 0. And that's just the factored form of our original equation. So this factored form gave us these zeros. So here are our zeros. There's 1. There's 2. There's 3. These are all real zeros, by the way, uh, right? Because they're not imaginary values. Uh, they're just not all rational. So we have 2 irrational and 1 rational 0. And then our factored form is here. 